If the rate equation for a reaction describes how the concentrations of reactants affects the rate, and the rate is determined by the slowest step in a multi-step reaction, the reactants involved in the rate equation must be involved in the rate determining step of the reaction. Any reactants of the whole reaction that aren't in the rate equation must therefore be involved in some other step meaning the reaction must happen in more than one step. As confusing as this all may sound, it gives us very useful information regarding how a reaction may occur and enables us to predict mechanisms, showing each step. For example, imagine a reaction between reactants A and B forming products C and D. If the rate equation for this reaction is rate equals rate constant K multiplied by the concentration of A, then this tells us that the slowest rate determining step doesn't involve reactant B, just A. We know at some point in the reaction that B must be involved as it's a reactant in the balanced equation, showing that products C and D aren't formed from just A meaning there must be at least two steps in the mechanism, one involving just A, the rate determining step, and then another involving reactant B. <laughs> at this point, I have to confess that anything beyond this becomes prediction. However, it's a prediction based now on actual data. It could be, for example, that A reacts to form an intermediate, let's call it E, and then this intermediate E reacts with reactant B to form products C and D. The second step, intermediate E reacting with reactant B, must be the fastest step as the rate equation only includes reactant A, which would mean step one is the rate determining step. The concentration of B has no impact on the rate of the reaction, meaning the step involving B must be much faster than the step involving A. This is why the concentration of B isn't in the rate equation, as it must be zero order.